Pituitary. Ah! Doctor! Professor! What's going on, Zina? Sharik! That monster tried to! Is Sharik still in your room? Yes! Sharik, who the hell gave you that gun? Step back, Doc. It's in your best interest to step back, because I won't hesitate. I'm so, so very mad at you that I can blow your goddamn head Sharik! Off. Zina, shut the fuck up! Don't make things worse than it is, Sharikov. Give me the gun. One more step and I'll shoot. It's for your own good to step back, like a good boy. Step back, doctor. Don't give me a reason to shoot. Get back, doctor! Zina, give me his glasses. Uh. Thank you. Mwah. You regret this, Sharik. I sure think. Now, Professor, I need some of that pretty, pretty cash you got. Uh, Sharik, off. Oh, oh. Professor, I count to ten. And when I'm done, I want the money. One, two. Uh, uh, my wallet is in my room, Sharik. Fine, go get it. Just don't waste any time, Professor. Chapter! Up. Zina. You can't run away from me forever. I will screw you sooner than later. And you can't run away from me, Sharik. I will find you wherever you go. Shut the fuck up, Doc. Just shut it. I can make you take your wish to the grave. Just one word if you have the balls. Just utter one more word and you'll see what I will do to you. Make a sound if you dare. And I blow your fucking head off, capiche? Good job, Professor. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Now, all three of you, get on the floor, on your stomachs. Chop, chop! <laughs> good, good. Give me the money. Give me the money. Give me the money. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What are you to me? What? You're my papa, right? Yes. What are you to me then? Your papa. What's the pituitary? Is it, it's a gland in the brain. In the brain? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Ah! Ah! Shadik, that gun is loaded. Is it here, Papa? Yes. Papa, Zina, watch <laughs> here, because I'm about to blow Burmental's pituitary <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Scene two, Stray Dog. Professor, where did you find this stray dog? Have you ever had a dog, Zena? No. And how do you know this is a stray dog? Because it's dirty and barking nonstop. Dogs bark, Zena. Do you expect it to sing? A purebred wouldn't bark for no reason. Look at its face. It's obviously a stray. Cut it the rabbit. Nonsense, Zena. Well, it has lice for sure. Cut it out, Zena. The dog doesn't have lice. Professor, you don't want to keep this ugly dog here, do you? This so-called ugly dog might help create a scientific revolution in medicine. <laughs> well, if you're going to cut it open, please do it as soon as possible to shut it up. Cut it. No, we want to turn him into a human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're messing with me, aren't you, Professor? Oh, I'm dead serious, Zena. It's a sin. Is it? Well, then pray for my redemption. No human can interfere with the work of God. Well, well but I'm going to. You cannot. But what if I could? But is it really necessary to turn this dog into a human? I mean, sick people come to your doorstep every day needing you to heal them. You'll be wasting your time sinning, turning this dog into a human, instead of curing people. You should have gone to a nunnery, Zena. You would have been great at it. Scene three. The new officers of the Housing Management Committee. Oh, 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 oh. I'd advise you not to read government issued newspapers before eating. 
Uh, scientifically speaking, I'd advise you not to read government-issued newspapers at all. Now, I once experimented on 30 people in my office, and the result was fascinating. Well, all those who read government-issued newspapers lost weight, were anxious, and showed some symptoms of depression. <gasps> oh, there's the dog. <laughs> now, your mission is to find a dead body. How did you get this dangerous dog to follow your home, Professor? With kindness. I mean, with sausages. Kindness is the only way to tame an animal. It doesn't matter what stage of evolution they are at, but scaring them undoubtedly won't work. No, it won't. Fear and intimidation disrupt the nervous system. Zena! Zena! Yes, Professor. Uh, feed some of those sausages that I bought today to this creature. Professor, you don't really want me to give those Krakowska sausages to this beast, do you? Gosh, you should have just bought junk meat. I, I'd rather go buy junk meat for it right now, and, and I can eat those Krakowska sausages myself. Sausages are like poison for our stomachs. You're an adult, but you'll devour anything you see like a child. Well, it's up to you, Zena, if you want to eat those sausages, help yourself. But I'm warning you, don't come running to us when your stomach starts acting up. We won't roll up our sleeves. Huh? Either way, just make sure the dog is fed. It's up to you. Zena, what is this cacophony? It's the new officers of the Housing Management Committee. I think they're having a meeting. This goddamn committee. Very well, go feed the creature. I want to leave this building, this, this apartment. It's not livable, not anymore. I can very clearly see how it's going to be. Oh, yes. Yes, after a while, they'll start singing anthems every evening, and then the pipes will freeze, and the central heating boilers will burst, and so on. <laughs> You're a pessimist, Professor. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not a pessimist. I'm a realist. If I say that the situation in this country is not good at all, and that it's going to get worse rather than better, it is only based on the facts that I see. And, and why the hell did they get rid of the flowers in the hallways, huh? Well, did Karl Marx forbid keeping flowers in hallways? And why does the electricity, which, if I remember correctly, only shut off twice in 20 years, now leave us blacked out regularly? <laughs> well, what do you consider a failure, doctor? <sighs> this house will soon turn into ruins. Yes, one cannot serve two gods. One can concurrently sweep the dirt out of the streetcars and settle the fate of the Cuban homeless at the same time. No, you cannot. No one can. Especially not a nation of people who are at least 200 years behind the rest of Europe in their general development and are still unsure how to button up their own trousers. Such a counter-revolutionary speech, Professor. It's a realistic speech, Doctor. I'm speaking from experience. Professor, the head of the new Housing Management Committee wants to have a word with you. Tell them I'm busy. I did, but they insist on speaking with you right now. <sighs> Zena, I'm starving and I want to have my dinner, so they say it won't take long. Fine, send them in. You see, doctor, how the disturbances have already begun. You shouldn't have walked in in your muddy boots, sir. You've tracked dirt all over my Persian carpet, sir. I am not a sir. Yes, I guessed as soon as you came in. You're a woman, then. I am a human being, comrade. <laughs> well, what do you want from me? My name is Schwunder. I am the new head of the Housing Management Committee. The committee has gone oh, through a shake Cut to the chase, please. Tell me the reason for your visit. And, and keep it short and quick. I want to have my dinner. We, the new members of the Housing Management Committee, yes, come to... have said this already. Uh, listen, I haven't had my dinner yet, so I'm very hungry. So just tell me the real reason for your visit. And smoking is not allowed in here. Following the decisions made after the general meeting for this block, as the new head of the Housing Management Committee, responsible to increase the number of residents in uh, this building, responsible I am here for to what? Clarify, please. We are responsible to increase the number of residents in this building. It was approved yesterday, 
at the meeting to increase the occupancy of your apartment to provide living spaces for those in need of a home. Apparently, you are not aware that according to the resolution of August 12th, my apartment is exempt from any increase in occupancy. We know that. But yesterday at the meeting, we concluded that considering all aspects, you are occupying too much space, more than necessary. You are living here in seven rooms alone. <laughs> I live and work in these seven rooms. I, mean, I actually need eight rooms. I'm now using the living room as a library. There's the study room and the dining room, which makes three. Uh, four, the operation room. Five, the examination room. Six, my bedroom, and seven, the housekeeper's bedroom. Uh, either way, my apartment is exempt. End of discussion. I am here exactly for the dining room and examination room. The committee is asking you to give up those rooms voluntarily. Huh. And would you tell me exactly where I am meant to visit with and examine my patients? Hmm. You can examine your patients in the um, library. <laughs> and uh, would you be so kind as to tell me where I should eat? In the bedroom. <laughs> I suggest you go back to your own business and leave me to eat where I have always eaten and to examine my patients in the examination room. Goodbye. Comrade, in the events of your Defiance, we will have no choice but to report you to the higher authorities. Uh, oh, so this is your game, yeah? Uh, I see. Uh, well, one moment, please. Mm -hmm. um, Doctor, P.A. Hello? I'm Professor Pro Brzezinski's assistant. Could you please connect me to Piotr Alexandrovich direct telephone? The professor wants to have a word with him. Thank you. Thank you. Piotr Alexandrovich, how are you? Oh, I'm so glad to hear you're well. Me? No, I, I'm not well, Piotr Alexandrovich, no. Uh, I'm afraid that your operation has been canceled. Yes, canceled. Well, in, in fact, all of my operations have been canceled. Well, because as of um, three minutes ago, I no longer have an operation room. Well, a, a woman dressed as a man has come to my apartment. She's, she's claiming to be the housing committee chairman. She, she's terrorizing me in my own home, and she wants me to give up some of my room. Hey, Professor, actually, yes, it's well, not she's evicting me from my examination room. Not only can I not work like this, but medically speaking, I'm not permitted to do so. And that is why I have no choice but to shut down my practice. Oh, well, I'll give the keys to Schwander. She can examine and operate on my patients. Yes. Oh, no, Piotr Alexandrovich, since August 12th, this is the second time. Well, the constant replacement of this building's housing management committee members has been driving me up... Oh, uh, pardon me? Well, I, well, on one condition, I don't care who signs this letter, so long as it states that nobody is ever allowed to knock on my apartment door about this matter ever again. Uh, wunderbar. Y yes, yes. I'll give her the phone right away. It's for you, Ms. Schwander. <laughs> Go on, Professor. You have twisted my words as much as you could. Keep going. It is in your best interest not to keep them waiting any longer. <clears throat> Comrade? Hello. Oh, I am the new head of the housing management committee, and... Oh, we, 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 we are only following the regulations, sir. Oh, we are not going to take all the rooms. We are going to leave him with five whole rooms. Yes, comrade. Yes, got it. 
So the professor is an exception. Yes, understood. Okay, if that, that's the case, then we will definitely... Professor, the committee asked you to forego the dining and examination room voluntarily. Tell them I need one more room, actually. As a show of good faith to the committee member, I am going to ask you to purchase a few of these magazines to help the Cuban children. One rouble each. I won't. Why? Because I don't want to. You don't feel for the Cuban children? I do. Well, then a spare a ruble for them. No. What should I tell the committee members then? Why don't you buy one? Because I don't want to. You know what, Professor? If you did not have an international reputation or you were not protected by central people, you would have been arrested immediately. What for? because you hate proletariat. Oh, well, you're absolutely right. I do not like the proletariat. Zima, serve dinner. <laughs> Scene four, Daily Journal. <laughs> What's the matter, Zena? The dog laughed. So, laughing isn't scary. It isn't? I've never seen a dog laugh before. Well, he's not a dog anymore. He's a human being now. Soon he'll be just like us. Ah, how is Shadok? Much better. He has lost all facial hair. His body is also bigger now. That's incredible. You know, I thought he'd die on the very first day. Do you journal every day? Yes. Even on the days when nothing interesting happens? I always have something to write about, Professor. There hasn't been a day where I thought nothing interesting had happened. I've always had something to write about because most of the things people disregard as ordinary are extraordinary to me. Huh. Well, journaling requires a lot of devotion. I've grown accustomed to writing them. It's hard not to do it. Why do you write? I want to publish them someday. I'm sure people would love to read the journals about this experiment. A friend of mine works for the Liberty newspaper. If you allow me, I'd like to give this to him to publish. No, no, no. no. No, I prefer not to publish the results. In this country, everything will get a political spin. Now, I prefer to reveal the results of this experiment in Europe. But I am interested to hear what you've got there. I'd love to hear them, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, I read what I wrote for today and yesterday. Oh, wunderbar. Uh, I've written everything as it happened. I apologize for any profanity that should offend you. I assure you, doctor, I will survive. January 6th, today Sharik's tail came off. He has the form of a human now. He still has some hair on his face and chest. When we talk, he looks as if he understands what we are saying. He can't speak and just utter some profanities. The curse words are yelled involuntarily. It seems that the animal has been yelled at all his life, and these curse words have been engraved on his brain. A few moments ago, the creature said to the professor, you worthless piece of crap. The professor said that shut up, and the dog did. January 7th. Today, Sharik laughed for the very first time. He has, he has lost all his hair, and his body has grown larger. Still, he's unable to walk alone, and someone has to hold his hands. As I'm writing this, Sharik is in the kitchen, wearing professor's... That's all I wrote. Oh. Well, now that you are writing everything, 
precisely as it is, you will be happy to know that I have found the biography of the man whose pituitary gland we used. Now, listen to this. Name, Vladimir Lavrov, age 35, single. He was arrested three times and acquitted twice on robbery charges. The first time he was acquitted due to a lack of evidence, the second time due to his low social class. The third time he was sentenced to 15 years in prison with hard labor. Occupation, balalaika player in taverns. Cause of death, a stab wound to the heart during a fight at the Flaming Red Bar. Would you please give me that paper, Professor? We should have read his biography before the operation. Professor, I am fed up with this animal. He defecates wherever he wants. Just today, I've cleaned up his feces more than five times, and even now he's in the kitchen with his pants down, <laughs> defecating! Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Professor, doctor! Sorry. What is Zina talking about? Help! Doctor, please teach him to do it in the bathroom. That is exactly what I want to do, oh. Zina. Doctor, can you buy him some clothes tomorrow? I love this dressing gown. <laughs> Scene five, Polygraph Polygrafovich. Zina? Zina? Yes, Professor? Please tell Shadok that it's five o'clock and to stop that dreadful sound. If you don't mind, Professor, you tell him. He'll go off on me if I tell him. Fine. Tell him to come in. By the way, Professor, he still sleeps in the kitchen and he keeps ogling at me. Talk to him again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that ridiculous tie? It's a groovy tie. Zena's choice. Oh. She got it for me. Zena has terrible fashion sense. Mm -hmm. And what about those boots? Oh, it's so flashy. I'm wondering where the devil you got these. Oh, look at you. It's all too busy. I'm wondering who you consulted about this. Tell me Dr. Bormenthal picked them for you. I chose them myself. What's wrong with them? If you had to spend your precious time walking around and looking at people instead of reading, you'd have seen that everyone is wearing one of these boots. It's fashionable. <laughs> I believe I've told you twice already, the kitchen is not a place for sleeping. I don't want to hear that you've been sleeping in there again. I like to snuggle up next to the heater. Zena does not like to have you in there. Zena acts as if she owns this apartment. Why can't the bitch understand she's just a fucking maid? Hey, don't talk about Zena like that, got it? Hey, I'm talking to you. Got it. <laughs> Zena says you lurk around her room at midnight. Stop that. And do not throw your food crumbs on the floor. Don't throw your cigarette butts on the floor either. I don't want to hear so much profanity in this house. And do not spit wherever you want. Don't whistle so damn much. And Shadok, take that bloody tie off. If you'd see yourself in a mirror, you'd know how ridiculous you look. It seems you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, Papa. Who are you calling Papa? What brazen familiarity. I, I don't want to hear you call me that word. Either just call me by my name from now on. Uh, yes, why won't you let me be? Don't spit, don't smoke, don't go there, don't do this, don't do that. Just like traffic regulations on the street. 
Why am I not allowed to call you Papa? <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to be a part of your oh oh you genetic experiments. Shame on you! You found that animal, you opened up its set, and you did whatever the hell you wanted to do with it, and now you hate it? Unbelievable! Maybe, 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 oh! Um, uh, 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 my, 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 my next of kin! Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe my next of kin wouldn't have allowed it either. Yeah, I can sue you if I want. I see, I see. So. Uh, you're not happy that you've become a human, is that right? Mm -hmm. Would you like to go back to being a stray dog, sleeping in the street and scavenging for food in the garbages, <laughs> do miss shivering in the freezing cold? <laughs> What's wrong with eating out of the garbage? At least it was an honest life. What if I had died on the operating table? What were you going to do then, comrade? Not. Your comrade, my name is Philip Filipovich. I don't want to hear you call me a comrade again, understood? Either call me by my name or, or simply call me professor, got it? <laughs> well, that's right. We are not comrades because I did not go to university. I do not have an apartment with so many rooms and baths and Zina, watch your mouth and your manners. <laughs> These bourgeois behaviors of yours make me mad. Hey, I'm warning you, watch your mouth and your manners. I'm warning you. Very well, Mr. Professor. <laughs> I need some documents. Documents? You should know that people who's oh, 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 identification has no documents are not considered an inhabitant of this country and are deprived of all social rights. The housing committee has requested it. <laughs> what does the housing committee have to do with it? Whenever I see them, they ask me, when am I going to register as an occupant? Whenever you see them, I have told you umpteen times to stop loitering around the building. Unbelievable! What am I, a prisoner? Am I a prisoner here? Shame on you! I have a right to go wherever I want, just like anyone else! Sit down! Ow, 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 ow. This time, I'll ignore the tone of your voice. <sighs> Tell me precisely what the Housing Committee wants. I don't know precisely. Anyway, there is no reason to sneer at the Housing Committee. The committee advocates for the workers' rights. <laughs> and you think you're a worker, do you? Uh, I must be, because I'm sure as hell not a capitalist. <laughs> what does the Housing Committee do to advocate for your workers' rights? Very easily. They will register me. They just need a certificate to do so. They say no one lives in Moscow without registration. What kind of certificate do they... They don't want me to give you a birth certificate, do they? Needless to say, you're, you're an artificial creature, an abnormal phenomenon. I can't simply... You are the abnormal one, bastard coward! Quiet! <laughs> no, the problem is... The problem is that you don't have a name. <laughs> I've chosen a name for myself. <laughs> really? What, what, what is your name? A polygraph Polygraphovich. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. What kind of a name is this? What's wrong with it? It's the name I've chosen for myself. Uh, I'm merely wondering where you found such a name. From the calendar. Nonsense. I don't believe this name to be on any calendar. Really? Yes, really. But I got this name from the calendar on the wall. <laughs> Where is this? Find March 4th. <laughs> March 4th. Ah. Yes, there it is. Zena? Oh. Zena? <sighs> yes, Professor? Throw this calendar in the fireplace. 
But it's this year's calendar, Professor. <laughs> Do as you're told, Zena. But if you don't want it, Professor, I can keep it in my room. Shh, throw in the fireplace, Zena. Yes, Professor. <laughs> well, Mr. <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what is your name? I keep the name you gave to me. Mr. Polygraph Polygraphovich Sharikov! Identification documents. <laughs> well, what should I write? It's not that hard. You just have to write a note, and I am sure you know very well how to do so. I hereby declare that the holder of this paper, Polygraph Polygraphovich Sharikov, <laughs> was born in this apartment. Oh, never in my life have I heard something as stupid and idiotic as this. He was not born. He's, he's merely some kind of a scientific experiment, which I can Nevertheless, he was created out of your experiment. You gave birth to Comrade Sharikov. It's really easy. Oh, you shut your mouth. Why should I shut my mouth? Comrade Sharikov is absolutely right. He has the right to be part of a conversation about <laughs> him, especially about his identification documents. <laughs> Professor, let's get this over with. Just tell me and I'll write it down. Fine. Well, are you writing? Uh, yes, Professor. Hi. <laughs> I... I hereby declare that the bearer of this leaflet is a being which exists as a result of a laboratory experiment involving a surgery performed on the brain. And he requires an identification document. I inherently oppose him having these idiotic documents, but I've been what, told what, what, I have what do you mean by these so. idiotic documents? Identification documents are the most important documents in the whole world. I cannot allow anyone to live in this building without proper documents, especially someone that is not enlisted for military oh. service. Hmm. Imagine a war with those bloodthirsty imperialists begins. What would happen then? I don't want to go to war. Oh, you lack the proper political knowledge, Comrade Sharikov. Otherwise, you would not have said that. You must enlist immediately. I'll enlist, but I'm not going to war. Hmm? Are you one of those recalcitrant anarchists? Huh? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty mangled during the surgery. Look at my forehead. See how many I got. Oh, I deserve a medical exemption. <laughs> well, for that, you have to go through the proper channel. My job here is to get that identification document from the professor and send it to the police department so they can issue a birth certificate for you. Uh, it's done, professor. Do you want to add anything? Should I hand it over? Oh, I'm sure it's fine. Give it to her. Me, 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 me. You have not signed it, Professor. Please write down Professor's name so he can sign under it. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Miss Schwander, I suppose there must be an empty room for rent in this uh, building, uh, right? Why the empty room? You get out of my face. No, Professor. We don't have any rooms. <laughs> well, I'm willing to pay for it. No, we do not have any rooms. Well, I'll pay double. We don't have an empty room, Professor. They don't have an empty room, Professor. You shut your mouth. <laughs> Since 
seven. A cat in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Sharik! I kill ya! Sharik! You know, what the hell is going on in here? Shark saw a cat, oh, Professor. Hey, now how many times have I told you not to let any cats into the apartment? Please just say come, Professor. I'm gonna kill you! Open the door right this moment, Shadikov! Oh, oh, it burns, it burns! Come out, I'm gonna right you. now! Shadik, Shadik, do you hear me, Shadik? Oh, oh, it burns, it burns! I think he's turned the hot water tap on. Open the door, Shadik. I locked myself in. Unlock the door, then. I can't. I think Sharik has the safety lock on too. Oh. Oh, There's some kind of a button burns. on the lock. Just push it down. Push it downward. I can't. It burns. Turn. Well, turn the hot water off, you idiot. I can't see it in here. Turn the lights on, you stupid fool. That stupid cat broke the light bulb. Oh, touch the ball. Touch the ball. You will find a water tap. Oh, if the tap stays open, water will run out from under the bathroom. You should go and handle your patients, Professor. I will fix this. <laughs> I think I have the nerve to see patients right now. Did you find a water tap, Sharik? Touch the ball. Zina, mm -hmm. go tell the patients I'm not able to visit with anyone today. Yes, Professor. Sharik, did you find a water tap? I did, I did, I did, I did. Close the water tap. I could. Okay. Now come out. Oh. Oh. Just touch the door. You can find the lock button. Just. Touch the door. You see, Sharik, you are not even capable of opening a door. What the hell is the matter now? Why aren't you coming out? Are you mad at me, Papa? Oh, you are not allowed to call me Papa, you little tooth creature. Come out, you colossal idiot. <laughs> Yes. Who are you talking to, Shari? Oh, I'm talking about that asshole, John. I have never seen a person more shameless than you. I can only say that you are you are an insolent creature. When will you learn to stop chasing after cats? Shari, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You are a beast, huh? A ferocious beast. Uh, I'm not a beast. I just can't take that asshole cat being in this apartment. He comes here every day and he steals our stuff. He wanted to steal the sausages. I wanted to teach him a lesson he wouldn't forget till the day he dies. Shut up, Sharik. It's you who need to be taught an unforgettable lesson. <laughs> Eight, Monsieur Sharikov. Would you like some soup, Professor? Yes, Zina, thank For you. For the hundredth time, Sharikov, you must wash your hands before eating. Go wash your hands. I washed them already. Get up and go wash your hands. Zina, tell him that I've already washed my hands. Yes, doctor. I saw Sharik wash his hands. Would okay. you like some soup, doctor? No, thank you, Zina. Very well, Sharik. Now you have to put your napkin on. Why? Would you like some soup, Sharik? No, Zina. Unless Sharik puts his napkin on, he's not allowed to eat. Fine, fine. I put it on. I put it on. Here, there you go. Zina, please pour him some soup. Tell me when it's enough. <laughs> Enough. Say thank you, Zina. <laughs> thank you, Zina. <laughs> That's not the food I say to eat, Sharik. You will spoil everyone's appetite like this. There is a spoon beside your plate. I'll ignore it this time, but if repeated, you'll be punished. Pass the booze, Zina. No, you drink way too much vodka these days. I want vodka now. You may want many things. Keep quiet and just let us eat in peace. Please. Please just stay calm, Professor. Leave it to me. You, Sharikov, are talking nonsense. And what's way worse is that you're doing it with complete confidence. 
I'm not saying you shouldn't drink any vodka because it is a mine, it is professors. I'm just telling you not to drink so damn much. It is not good for your health. Besides, your behavior is bad enough without vodka. But now, you are allowed to have a little drink. <laughs> just a little. Sina, my dear, give me a glass of water, please. <coughs> yes, Professor. <coughs> you should first offer it to others before drinking it yourself. First to the professor, then me, then Zina, and then you drink. <laughs> you act as if you are putting on a show. Put on a napkin, put on a tie, please. Sorry, thank you, you're welcome. Why don't you try and act normal? <laughs> Honestly, you capitalists act as if the Tsar empire is still in power. The age of Tsar is over, the Tsar is <laughs> dead. <laughs> What do you mean by act normal? You know what I mean. Nastavrovia. Background. What? I'm not talking to you. Sorry, Professor. I don't understand what you mean. There's nothing we can do. After all, the pituitary belonged to Vladimir Lavrov. What's the pituitary? Do you suppose this I is I don't suppose. Reason? I'm certain of it. You mean it's possible that... Uh, später. Good. You guys are talking about me. Don't think I don't understand, because I do, I do, I do. No, that's enough vodka for tonight. I've already filled it. Give it to me, Sharikov. Oh. Put it down. Fine, fine. Very well. Now, where do you want to go tonight, Sharikov? Uh, let's go to the circus. I don't know why you go to the circus every day. Personally, I find the circus to be very boring. Now, if I were you, I would go to the theater and see a play. I don't like theater. Why don't you like theater? It's bullshit. It's all talk, talk, and talk. Pure counter-revolutionary. A place for the so-called intellectuals. You're saying this out of ignorance. You must educate yourself and read some books. Maybe then... I do read. I read a lot. Really? Mm, really. Very well. What was the last book you read? Um, the guy's letter. The guy's name is on the tip of my tongue. Engels, Engels. The Engels Kautsky correspondence. Engels? Mm. Kautsky. Mm. Very well. What did you think? I'm not. You're not what? I'm not agreeing. With whom? Engels or Kautsky? Neither of them. They just sit down and write bullshit. Interesting. Anyone who says this, they must have some. What do you suggest, then? Well, they must take everything from the masters and divide it equally between everyone. This is exactly the answer that I expected. Very well, Sharikov. Uh, what strategy do you suggest for executing the theory of yours? No strategy needed. For example, there is someone who has seven rooms and 40 pairs of pants, while there is someone else scavenging for food in the garbage cans. Why the hell is that? It seems you are uh, alluding to me by mentioning seven rooms and 40 pairs of pants. Who knows? Wunderbar. Mm. I have nothing against fair distribution. Zena, how many patients did we turn away yesterday? 39. 39, that's, um, well, that's 390 rubles we lost, which should be shared equally between the three of us. <laughs> well, your share is 130 rubles, Shadikov. Hand it over. Wait a damn second, what do you mean? The professor is talking about yesterday's <laughs> incident. The battle between you and the cat. We lost 39 patients because of you. And yesterday alone, I had to pay 50 rubles to the neighbor for the window you broke. That asshole cat kept taunting me by prancing around me. Unbelievable! You paid 50 rubles to that jack as for his idiot cat? You also beat some woman in the survey. She slapped me. My face is not public property so that anyone can do anything to it. Because you spanked her butt. You shot a cough. 
<gasps> you belong to the lowest stage of evolution, still being formed yet lacking in intelligence. Everything you do, all your behaviors are bestial, and yet you have the audacity to sit in the company of people with a very high caliber of education and talk in a very casual and unbearable tone about the distribution of wealth with an equally high caliber of stupidity. <laughs> you who eat toothpaste. <laughs> Seriously? Yes, yesterday. You shot a cough. Have to try to keep your mouth shut and just listen. You have to learn how to behave properly and to try to be a productive member of society. By the way, who was the idiot who gave you that book? Why do you call everyone an idiot? Do you think this is a proper way to behave? Well, never mind. I already know who the idiot was. Fine, Schwunder gave it to me. So what? Uh, reading is the foundation of all learning. <laughs> yes, I see how much you've learned by reading Kotsky. Where's the book now? It belongs to the public library. If you want to draw it in the fireplace, you should know that it's a public property. Oh, it doesn't matter. Where is it? Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Where is it? In the waiting room. Sina, bring the book here. Where in the waiting room is it? On the table. What does the book look like? Greeny. Oh, no need to bring it here, Zina. You know what, just throw it in the fireplace. Are you sure, Professor? The book belongs to the public library. Yeah, it's public property. Do as you're told, Zina. As you wish, Professor. <sighs> Well, Doctor, if, uh, if you're going to take him to the circus tonight, you'd better check the circus's programs in advance. Make sure there are no cats in the show tonight. Uh, I don't get why they let these filthy animals into the circus. I really, truly don't get it, Professor! Sit down! I don't get why you have to howl. <clears throat> yeah, it's better if I check tonight's program. The circus program is in today's paper. The show without any cats in it. Well, 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 a show without any cats. In the Slomonsky Circus, there is a show called For You. For You Sums and the Mind Blowing Silver Wheeler. Okay. What is a You -sum? Yeah, what is a You -sum? First time I'm hearing of it. Yeah. Very well. It's better if you check the Nikita Circus's program as well. You must be cautious about what you're going to see. Uh, Nikita, Nikita, Nikita. The elephant and the ultimate <laughs> agility of humans. And how do you feel about elephants, Shadokov? Why do you think I don't understand anything? I do. Cats are a special case. <laughs> Poor elephants are civilized animals. Oh, great. <laughs> as long as you think mm. that they are civilized, you can go and see them. But don't. Talk to anyone at the bar. Do whatever Dr. Bormenthal says. And, doctor, don't let him drink tonight. What time are we going to the circus, Bormenthal? Please address me by my full name. Then you should address me by my full name, too, please. <gasps> don't burp, you uncivilized idiot. And I forbid saying that stupid name in my household. <laughs> what was it? Telegraph, Telegraphovich? <laughs> no! Polygraph, Polygraphovich, Sharikov! Well, if you don't want to be called just Sharikov, the best the doctor and I can do for you is to call you Monsieur Sharikov. <laughs> I'm not a Monsieur. Monsieur lives in Paris. Well, as long as I live here, only Monsieur will be used in this apartment, unless either the doctor or I should move out, and <laughs> the probability of you leaving is far greater. I'll, I'll, I'll put an ad in the newspaper today to rent a room for you. Do you think I'm stupid enough to leave this apartment? <laughs> Don't be rude, Monsieur Sharikov. I have a right to live here. Here it is. These are my papers. Now I'm a member of this building. We hereby declare that 12 squared meters of apartment number two belongs to citizen Polygraph Polygraphovich Sharikov, signed head of the housing committee. 
Schwander. I swear, on my honor, I would like nothing more than to hang Schwander from the first tree that I see. That woman is like... Position, pus. Professor. No, doctor, I don't want to anymore. I'm exhausted. Listen, Shadokov, oh, Monsieur Shadokov, I am warning you. From now on, if you keep prying or behaving in any way that I don't like, oh, and you know exactly what behaviors I'm talking about, you'll be deprived of dinner. You won't be able to eat here at all anymore. Oh, 12 square meters might be very suitable, but nowhere in this bloody paper does it say that I have to feed you. But no one can live without food. Where would I feed myself then? Then be civilized! Oh. Scene nine. What the hell is the SDCSA? His stuff is missing. My gloves are missing too. I clearly remember leaving them on the table in the waiting room. I also remember that there was a bottle of vodka next to them. But now there is no sign of the gloves nor the vodka. Well, I had two 100 ruble bills on my nightstand in my room, which I noticed were missing yesterday. Well, it seems that Sharikov has left forever. Highly unlikely. I gave Sharik 50 rubles. Cosina. Then I must be right. I, for one, would thank God if Sharik never comes back. Maybe Schwunder knows what's happened. I don't want to talk to that stupid brute. I'll talk to her myself. Hello? Mrs. Schwunder? This is Dr. Brumenthal. We have no idea where Sharikov is as of yesterday. I thought maybe you would know something that... Never mind, Mrs. Schwunder. Sharikov turned up just now. Goodbye. Sharik, you smell horrible. Where have you been since yesterday, Sharik? I got a job. You got a job? Yep. At the SDCSA. Now I can't stand on my own feet. <laughs> what the hell is the SDCSA? Here it is. This is my work mandate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Listen to this, Professor. <laughs> it is hereby certified that Comrade Polygraph Polygraphovich Sharikov is appointed as the head of the sub -de department of the control of stray animals <laughs> in the precinct of the city of Moscow, in the department of the Moscow Health Organization, and is responsible for... <laughs> oh. <laughs> and is responsible for the destruction of stray animals, such as cats, etc. <laughs> Excuse my forwardness, but... Why do you smell so foul? That's what I said. He smells like a cat. <laughs> mm, I might smell a little. It's because of my job. I've been dealing with stupid, foul-smelling cats. And now you'll go straight to shower. Mm, I'm tired now. I want to rest. Cut the crap, Sharikov. You can't possibly want to rest in those filthy mm. clothes. Shower will be relaxing as well. Get up. You're forcing me. I don't want to take a shower right now. Don't talk back to me, Sharikov. And when you get out, we need to talk. Do you think you can just steal from this house and go wherever the hell you want? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't steal anything. These allegations will not stick to me. You took two 100 ruble bills from my room, Shadokov. Why do you think it was me? I'm not the only person who lives in this building. Well, you're not implying Dr. Gormenthal has taken the money, are you? Maybe Zina did. What? <laughs> Straight oh, dog, how dare you? Calm down, Zena. Don't be stupid. But there's filthy animals calling uh, me stop a Stop it, Zena. How can you think that we are going to believe a word out of this creature's mouth even for one second? Knock it off. Professor, if you have the slightest oh, doubt in your don't mind. Don't get mad, Zena. Uh, Sharikov, apologize to Zena right now. Why? I just Shut said up, Sharikov. I just repeat what I'm saying. I'll strangle you right now. Got it? Got it, got it, got it. Now repeat after me. Okay, let go of me and I'll repeat whatever you want. I'm sorry, Zinaida. Prokofievna. Go ahead, Sharikov. I'm sorry, Zinaida. Prokofievna. I sincerely apologize for... I sincerely...
will they apologize for? For accusing you of stealing. For accusing you of stealing. Okay, doctor, let him go. Thank you. He's dying. <laughs> now tell me, are you back to live here? Where else can I go? Very well. Then you will behave. You will be quiet. You will not curse or do anything wrong. <laughs> or you have to face me. Got it? <laughs> Say yes, I got it! Yes, I got it! <laughs> what do you do with the cat carcasses? They take them to a protein-making factory to make food for the workers. Would you like me to bring some home? You disgust it! <laughs> go take a shower because you do reek of dead cats. <laughs> Go then! What are you waiting for? Fine, fine! <laughs> He's a man with the heart of a dog. Oh, no, no, you're wrong, doctor. You're being unfair to dogs. But look at how he chases after cats all day. Oh, Shatikov's overwhelming response to cats is temporary. I promise he'll stop chasing them soon enough. Well, no, doctor, you say that Shatikov has the heart of a dog? I say he has a human heart, just like us. Sin 10, a badass motherfucker. Говорила маменька, про любовь обманную. Но она просто тратила слова. Ау, ау. <laughs> <laughs> Маму я не слушала, дотыкала уши я. Ох, мама, мама, как же ты была права. Ау, ау. Ах, мамочка, He's so cute, Charlie. Is he really a professor? You get the hell out of my apartment! Yeah, he's very much a professor. <laughs> so listen up, oh. I will I will have a quick class with you. Charlie is my boy with a horror heart today. Papa, I want a wife! <laughs> ah, a Fyodor! Can you please kick this man out of the building? Boy! Skadano! Pin it! Pin it! Just pin it! Hi, Fyodor. His name is Fyodor. But, but everyone calls him Fyodor. Sharikov, tell your friends to leave. Hi, Fyodor. How are you, Fyodor? Vamos. What? What? Get the hell out of Professor's apartment. Sharikov, did huh. you say this was your apartment? Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of meters in this apartment. Now what, Fyodor? You heard what Sharikov said? Okay. We can do this the easy way. Or the hard way. The hard way. <laughs> Get the hell out or out. I asked what? I'll throw you out. Oh, will you now? Will you? Get the fuck out. I'm sure he comes guest to my capish. Let go of him. Fyodor is my friend. He's my guest. And this is my home. <laughs> Sharikov, did you know Vladimir Lavrov? Uh, no. Sharikov, tell your friend to leave. I just want to have... Uh, I just want to have a, I just want to have a good cat to have a cat and then I live in my own. Ah, this, I need a wife, Papa. <laughs> I need a wife, Papa. <laughs> you know, I think we should call the cops. Oh. Call the cops to deal with oh. We are not afraid of cops. We, we are, are not, not afraid, afraid of cops. Cop. We, we are not afraid of cops. Cop. I just want to have, have a quick cat. With Papa Prefetta, and then I live in my own. I live in my own. Please Listen up. up. Hello, police department. Okay, okay. Look. No reason to call the cops. I live in my own. See, I'm leaving. Oh, oh. Shall I go? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Zina, Piotr, yes, we are. My professor. No, vamos. Yes, we are. Говорила мама мне, Роли будет обманной, на просто крякина слова. Ушел, ушел. Тина, я не слушала. А, 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 а,
this creature an unforgettable <laughs> lesson. We crossed the line. <laughs> I've never seen such a shamelessness in my entire life. <laughs> Sorry for waking you up so late, Fyodor. Ah, don't mention it, Prophet. No sweat. Uh, it, it is my job. <laughs> it is my job. It is. <coughs> uh, uh, yes, Fyodor, what you did tonight was well worth it did. 10 rubles. Zina, get Fyodor 10 rubles. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Do you need anything else? No, Fyodor. Good night. Sleep well. I'm not Thank afraid. you, Professor. You I'm too. Not, Have a good night. I'm not afraid of course. You get up and go sleep in your own room. I'm fine. It's comfy here. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Shadikov. Oh. Why do you associate with... Who the hell was that? A badass motherfucker. <laughs> Wait till Dr. Bormenthal gets here tomorrow. I'll tell him everything you did. He'll know what to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> Scene 11, Natasha. Mm -hmm. Here is the kitchen. And here is my reading room. I read Engels and Kautsky here. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm going to show you my bedroom. Bedroom. <laughs> Shonikov, aren't you going to introduce me to this lovely lady? Um, uh, Natasha, my wife. We got married. She's our office secretary. She's here to live with me. Where exactly? Well, Dr. Burmental can sleep in the waiting room. He has his own apartment. He can go and sleep there. Hmm. Madame, can I speak with you in private for a few minutes? Yes. No, no way. No speaking in private. I must be present. This is my wife. Whatever you want to tell her, I should hear as well. Madame, ask him to leave us alone just, just for a few minutes. No, I don't want anyone to talk in private with my wife. You, I, I don't, you know what? Your, 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 your trust is not forcefully at all, Professor. Natasha doesn't want to talk to you in private. Isn't that right, Natasha? I won't do it if you don't want me to. <laughs> Dr. Bormantal? <coughs> Dr. Bormantal? Did you call me, Professor? Can you come in here and talk to Shadikov for a moment? I, I remembered you wanted to talk with him. Ah, there you are, Shadikov. Long time no see. Hello, mademoiselle. Uh, my significant other, Natasha. Dr. Burmental. Seriously? Mm, yes. Madame is Sharkov's <laughs> wife. I need to speak with her in private, and you obviously know what it is about, but Sharkov doesn't want me to talk to her in private. Oh, but Sharikov has to. Either way, some details must be clarified for the madam. Mm. And while you're talking to her, Professor, I will speak to Sharikov about the other night's escapade. We can go into the living room. After you, uh, Madame. No, Natasha. Stay right here. I don't want anyone to talk privately with my wife. You know what? Let's get out of here, Natasha. You should just stay here, Professor. We'll go to a different room. If you want to leave, you'll have to go alone, Sharikov. Either way, the Professor will have a talk with this madam. About what? Madame, if you care about your future, it is in your best interest to hear what I have to say. Okay. Oh, I won't allow it, Natasha. Tell them that you don't want to talk to anyone behind your husband's back. Ignore him, madam. The most famous surgeon in Russia and even Europe wants to speak with you. Don't miss this opportunity. Sharikov and I will go to another room. We have some private matters to discuss. Oh, go off me, Burmental. I'm not going anywhere. Sharikov! I want to talk to you. Zina told me about the other night and the drunk man. Thank you. Now, dear madame, could you please tell me precisely what Shadikov told you about his past? <laughs> Scene 12, the scar on the forehead. 
I am deeply <laughs> sorry for upsetting you, madame. But it was incumbent upon me to tell you the truth. <laughs> you are young, and it would be a pity for you to waste your life. But you have to be more careful. It is unwise to accept the first proposal you receive, to get married and build a life with a stranger. You have to be more cautious. <laughs> I've told him no at first, but he threatened me and kept pestering me. Then he told me that he was a Red Army officer and he's going to take me to live in this posh flat. <laughs> he said he was kind-hearted and that he only hates cats. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Did you really find him in the streets? Uh, yes, madame. <laughs> when they come in, I'll, uh, I'll ask a question. And if... Shadokov lies, you will see by Dr. Gormenthal's reaction, which will convince you that everything I've told you is the truth. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Dr. Gormenthal? Oh, I'm scared he's going to pester me again. We won't let him pester you again. <laughs> ah, Shadokov. Would you tell us how you got that scar on your forehead? Uh, uh, how many times do I have to describe it? I'll describe it one more time and tell the truth, please. It was a tough moment. Every time I think about it, my train of thought leaves the station. Oh, cut it out, Shadokov. Just tell us where you got the scar on your forehead. I was wounded in combat. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about, Shadokov? told madam the truth, Shadokov. You stray dog! You're a filthy liar! <laughs> oh, I find you now, Dasha! I'll make you regret this! I'll do something you'd never forget! I'll tell them to cut your face! Don't listen to this empty threats! I won't let him hurt you. What is your full name, madam? Natalia Bolgakov. Natalia Bolgakov. I'll remember your name, madam. And I'll drop by the health organization every day to make sure you're not bothering Ms. Bolgakov. And if you do, Sharikov, I strangle you with my own hands. Got it? Scene 13, like a real dog. <coughs> Doctor, professor! What's going on, Zina? Sharik tried to the monster! He tried Is to... Sharik still in your room? Yes! Okay. <coughs> Sharik, who the hell gave you that gun? Step back, Doc. It's in your best interest to step back, because I won't hesitate. I'm so, so very mad at you that they can blow your goddamn head off. Sharikov! Nina, shut the fuck up! Don't make things worse than it is, Sharikov. Give me the gun. One more step and I'll shoot. It's for your own good to step back like a good boy. Step back, doctor. Don't give me a reason to shoot. Get back, doctor. Zina, give me his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You regret this, Sharik. Sure thing. Now, nah, Professor, I need some of that pretty, pretty cash you got. Sharik, I... Yes, professor! I'll count to ten. And when I'm done, I want the money. One, a two... My wallet is in my room, Sharik! Fine. Go get it. Just don't waste any time, Professor. Chop, chop! Zina. You can't run away from me forever. I will screw you sooner than later. You can't run away from me, Sharik. I will find you wherever you go. Shut the fuck up, Doc. Just shut it. I can make you take your wish to the grave. One word if you have the balls. Just utter one more word and you'll see what I will do to you. Make a sound if you're there. And I blow your fucking head off, capiche? Good job, Professor. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Now, all three of you, get on the floor, on your stomachs. Chop, chop! Uh, uh, give me the money. Give me the money. <laughs> what are you to me? What? You're my papa, right? Yes. What are you to me, then? Your papa. 
What's a pituitary? It, it's a gland in the brain. In the brain? Yes! <laughs> Yes! Yeah! 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 Charlie, that gun is loaded! Is it here, Papa? Yes! Uh, Papa, Zina, watch here, because I'm about to blow Burmental's pituitary now! Charlie, get stuck! We have nothing to talk about, Doc! Listen. You have to die! Listen, Charlie, listen! Please, address me by my full name! I've always loved you, Charlie! I, I said address me by my full name! Dear Polygraph Polygraph of Age! Beg me not to kill you! I beg you, you drunk, Sharikov. You don't know what you're no, doing. No, the way you're acting now won't make me feel any mercy for you. You need to beg in a way that I feel for you. I'm going to come to three. Try to get me to sympathize with you. One, two, three. I beg you. <laughs> don't do this, Sharikov. Please. Oh. Zina doesn't want me to kill you too. Can you guess why Zina begs me not to do so, Burmenta? I don't know. You don't know? Then you deserve to have a bullet right in the middle of your pituitary right now. Tell me why she's begging. I don't know, Shadikov. Okay, fine. You're asking for it. Uh, Shadikov, you, you got your money. Leave, please. I want to know why Zina asking me to let the doctor live. If someone doesn't answer my question, I'll kill him. I'm going to go to three. One, two, three. Shut the woman, please. Okay, why, doctor? I think Zina loves me. Oh, yeah? Is he right, Zina? Do you love him? Yes. Well, whoever Zina loves for sure has to love him. So shut up and beg you. Address me by my full name. What have I ever done to you? If you want to stay alive, you have to beg for it, Burmental. I'll come to three, and if you can't get me to feel sorry for you, I'll kill you. One, two, three. Please, Charlie, please, Charlie. Address me by my full name. Dear Polygraph, Polygraph of it. If you kill me, they hang you for the crime of murder. You are a human, Sharikov. Killing is a bestial behavior. I want to hear you beg. I am begging. Beg more. Make me feel sorry for you. Please, Sharikov. No, no. I don't feel any mercy for you. It's time to kill you. Goodbye, woman. No, 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 I didn't do you any harm. If I was ever harsh or violent with you, it was for your own sake. Didn't do me any harm. I was married. I wanted to have my own life. But you and the professor didn't let me. What does harm mean to you, Burmental? I call you Burmental. Any complaints? No, no. no. I'm going to call you whatever I like. You call me whatever you like. Okay, now barks. <laughs> I, I don't know how to bark. <laughs> if you want to stay alive, you have to bark, poor and all. Pronto, one, <laughs> a two, a three. Okay, 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 Bark better, like a real dog, like a real stray dog. Bark. Okay, okay. Now follow me on all fours and bark. 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 Keep barking. Keep barking. Scene 14, Espinoza. How many views? A hundred so far. Don't worry, doctor. Luckily, your face is not discernible in the video. No, it was way too dark for filming. Nobody can tell that it was you. I must find him. No, doctor, he has a gun. He'll shoot you. You better go to bed, Zina. How can you leave your door unlocked at night? You always have to lock the door. How come you haven't been locked in this apartment at night? Good night, doctor. We made a mistake at the outset, doctor. We should have done more research. I mean, if we had known that the pituitary gland belonged to a dangerous hoodlum, we would never have used him. You know, yesterday, one of my patients brought in a report that Shadokov had written about me. Yes, he wrote that I was anti-revolutionary. Well, 
I blame myself, doctor. I really do. But we have to do something. We have to make a serious decision. He's getting more and more dangerous every day, and now he's armed. Whatever crime he commits out there, you and I are partially responsible for. After all, we created him. We have to do something. What should we do, Professor? Well, we have to prevent further damages. We have to get rid of Sharik, and you know very well there is only one way out. No, Doctor. Killing him is dangerous. Have you thought about the consequences? Professor, you have an international reputation. No one is going to prosecute you for killing a well, dog. What about you, Doctor? You do not have an international reputation. No, Doctor, I am not going to do something that might get you behind bars while I hide behind my reputation. We have no choice but to get rid of him. Are you just going to wait until that hoodlum turns into a full-blown human? I want to confess something to you, Doctor. I, Professor Preobazhensky, am a fool. And I made a mistake in Shadokov's operation, just like any third-year med student would. Oh, yes, I, I wanted to create a human being and say, behold, I too createth life. And now I see the outcome of my delusion. All that work, all that research was for a small stray puppy that would someday turn into a human. And now the result is so disgusting that it makes you sick. You see, doctor, when instead of keeping in step with nature, one tries to compete with it, the result will be a horrible mess like Shadokov. What if the brain belonged to Spinoza, Professor? <laughs> yes. Yes, if the brain had belonged to Spinoza, I would have created an intelligent being by a pituitary transplant, and the result would have been a masterpiece. But so what? I, I tell me, doctor, what is the point? When every damn day women can birth natural Spinozas, what is the point of creating a fake one? I think we should try the experiment again. But we have to use the pituitary of someone with a good background this time. Don't worry about Sharik. I'll take a risk of giving him arsenic. No, doctor, I will not allow it. As your mentor, I feel permitted to give you advice. Murder is never the solution. Sharik belongs to you either way. You created him. Well, killing him is not the only way to get rid of him. I know what to do with him. I have made up my mind. It is a fait accompli. I want you to go and find him right away. I know where to look. I'll live right away and check every bar in town. I'll find him and bring him in tonight. But what are you going to do with him, Professor? <laughs> Fifteen. Death to cats. Long live sausages. Long live socialism. Why did you tie up my hands and feet? Long live Dr. Bermental. Long live. Why did you tie me up? Long live the revolutionary. Government and long live vodka. <laughs> long live sausages. Long live socialism. Everybody. Long live. So but death to God. Zina. Zina, I love you. I love you. I, I love, love you. I want to know why you tied me up. Yeah, I have a right. To no doctor, I'm feeling bad. Untie my hands and feet, doctor. Long live Sasaja, long live Sasaja, long live the revolutionary government, and long live vodka. If you had come earlier, I could have bought you a drink too. I bought everyone there at the ring. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. Untie my hands and feet, comrade. I have a brilliant plan 
that executed correctly can absolutely obliterate any god in this city. If my plan executed correctly, Moscow's whole cat generation will go extinct in three days. Only three days, doctor. Three days. Three days. What are you going to do, doctor? But you have no right to inject me. You have no right to inject Oh! Oh! Death to cats! Death to all colonial governments! Death to those blood-sucking imperialist motherfuckers! Everything ready? <laughs> Long live, Professor! Long live myself! Long live myself! What are you going to do, Professor? What are you going to do, Professor? You couldn't be a good human, Shatikov. But I'm hoping you can be a good dog again. Papa, 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 please, please, please! I beg you, Papa, I beg you, I beg you. You're not allowed to change me back, Papa. You're not allowed. I'll take you to court. Death to the professor. Death to Dr. Burmental. Death to Zina. Death to imperialism. Death to capitalism. Death to cats. Oh. Zina, please put a note on the door telling the patients that I can't visit with anyone today. Ooh. <laughs>